Welcome to the channel everyone. Today we're going to jump into some Power BI basics and how to use the tool. We'll take a look at how to install Power BI, connecting to data, an introduction to data manipulation and Power Query, navigating the interface, and how to create visuals. By the end of this video, you should have a solid grasp on what Power BI is and how it works. Let's dive in. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is how to install Power BI. Really all you need to do is open up the Microsoft Store and type in Power BI Desktop. The app will open and you'll have the option to install. I already have mine installed, so I'm just gonna click open. By the way, I'm running a Windows engine through Parallels on my MacBook. If you have a MacBook and you wanna use Power BI, I'll have a video linked in the description on how you can download Parallels and do this as well. But since I already have the application installed, I'm just gonna click open. And so here we have Power BI. This is my blank report that I can connect to data and start creating visuals. So right now, since it's a blank report, we don't have any data. So the first thing we wanna do is connect to some data. Up here in the top left-hand corner, you'll see the option Get Data under the Home tab. If we click the drop-down, we get a list of common data sources, anything from Excel, SQL Server, uh, CSV files. And if we click More, we get a list of all the different platforms that Power BI can connect to. There really are tons of options here, but for this example, we're just gonna connect to an Excel workbook. So I have Excel workbook selected and I'm gonna click connect. I'm gonna to connect to this coffee shop sales Excel workbook that I got from Maven Analytics. I'll go ahead and link the Maven Playground where you can download this data set along with lots of other great data sets to use with your project. So we're gonna click this one and we're gonna click open. Next, I'll get this navigator box that pops up where I can just select the tables that I want to import. In this data set, there's only one sheet, so there's just one table. We're going to select that table and get ready to connect it. Now I have a couple of options here. I can choose to load the data, which will take me immediately into the report view, and I can start playing with visualizations. Another option I have is to transform data. This is going to open up the Power Query Editor and allow me to do some data manipulation. In a future video, I'll go more in depth on Power Query and how to manipulate your data. Today, I'm gonna to do a brief overview. We'll still click Transform Data, and this is gonna pull up our Power Query Editor. And let's just take a quick look at what we can do with our data through Power Query. So here we have our coffee sales data, and we have a number of columns uh, in our data set. We have the transaction ID, transaction date, store location, product category, type, details, unit price, lots of great stuff that we can work with here for a project. And I'll show you a few examples of what we can do with our data in Power Query. Again, there's tons you can do in this application, but we'll just go over a couple of basics here. Say we wanted to retitle a column. Here we have the transaction quantity column. Say we wanted to rename it transaction count, for instance. We would double click into the header and we can type in transaction count. Next thing I wanna look at is applied steps. Once we make a change, change, any steps we take will show up in this box. So you can see that we have the renamed column step that we just took saved into our applied steps area. And any of these steps can be deleted. Say I wanted to maintain the original title of that column after all, I can just click the X here and completely remove that step. And we could even change the data type for our columns by clicking into this little box. And we have a few options that we can change to. Uh, this data type is good, so we're not going to change it, but you get the idea. We could also do things like use headers as first row, but then if our data doesn't automatically have headers, we can also use first row as headers. And it'll go ahead and promote the row to the header. And one other thing we'll look at is the ability to remove columns. Say we don't want the transaction quantity column, it's not helpful, and we just want to remove the column goes away. For this exercise, we do want that column, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it back. But you can see how Power Query makes it really easy to manipulate your data and make changes. Once you're comfortable with the changes you've made, we can close and apply over here in this button. That's going to save our changes and apply them into our Power BI report. Once our data is loaded, Power BI will bring us back to the report view. And I wanna take this opportunity to take a quick overview of the layout. There are three different views that we have in Power BI that can all be navigated to in this left-hand side. The first is the report view, where we are now. This is where we can play with our data and create visualizations 
create dashboards. The second view is the table view. This pulls up our data, kind of like we saw in Power Query. Uh, there's a few options for playing around with our data, creating measures and columns, but really it's just a way to take a look at your data and maybe make some minor changes. The third view is the model view. This brings up a view of our tables, and if we have more than one table, we can establish connections between them and play with their relationships. Again, I'll go over this more in depth in a future video, but for today's video, we just have one table we're working with, so we don't really need to do anything in the model view. Going back to the report view, which is where you'll probably spend most of your time for most Power BI reports, let's take a look at the interface here. We have a few tabs up top, the Home tab, Insert tab, Modeling tab, where we have different options of what we can do. And then we have a few different panes over here, and I'm gonna start right to left. The first pane is our data pane. This is where we have the data that we loaded in. If I click this dropdown under the transactions table, we see our columns and measures that we're able to create visuals with. If you have more than one table, that table will populate below the first one, so on and so forth. We can open and close them. The second pane here to the left is the visualizations plane. This is where we can select visuals and start creating them. And then the third pane, which is collapsed by default, is the filter pane. We can create filters on a page level, on a visual level, across all pages. Say I wanted to see which product category had the most transactions. And for this information, I want to see it as a clustered bar chart. I can go ahead and click clustered bar chart, click product category, and click my transaction quantity field. And what populates is a bar chart. We can see from looking at this that coffee had the most transactions, tea had the second most transactions, and going down here, we see packaged chocolate had the fewest amount of transactions. So you can see just how easy it is to create visuals. In just a few clicks, I have a, a bar chart here that is already giving me some insights. Now let's take a look at a line chart. So I'm gonna click out of my bar chart, select my line chart visual. And for this visual, I wanna look at transaction quantity over time. To do that, I'll click my transaction date column and my transaction quantity field. Initially, we can see that it's just summing up all transactions into a single point in a single year. I can adjust this view by expanding down one level in the hierarchy with this fork option. And you can see that it went from plotting everything at the year level to the quarter level. If we go down one more level, we could see it by month. And this is what we're interested in, plotting the data over each month and the year. Based on this visual, we can see that there was a slight dip in February and that transactions trended up and up, peaking all the way in June which is the last month in the data set. Now let's take a closer look at the visualizations pane. You can see that in this pane, we have three different tabs. There's the data tab, the format tab, and then this further analysis add. These first two are probably what you're gonna be using the most. This data tab is where we select the data that we wanna work with. And in the second tab is where we can format our visual. Say for instance, we don't want axis titles. Well, I can click into x-axis and I can turn the titles off for both my x-axis and my y-axis. If I go into the general section, I can change the title. Say this title is a little bit too long for me and instead I just wanna name it transaction trend. I'm gonna center that title, bold it, and make it a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see. Last thing I'm gonna do here is back on my visuals tab, I'm just gonna change the color of the lines. I go under lines here and under the color section, I could click into this color palette and let's just say I want it to be orange instead of blue. So there we go, in just a few minutes we created two very meaningful visuals that gave us some insight into our data. There is so much you can do to customize visuals. I want to do more videos where I go way more in depth into these concepts. But for now, these are some basics on how you can get started with visuals and start plotting your data. Hope the video today was helpful. Thanks again for tuning in. If you did find it helpful, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Becoming a data analyst is a challenge. In this video, I go over what I would do to become a data analyst if I had to start over. 